In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe's Generative Fill. This is an AI artificial intelligence generative image tool made by Adobe. It's available in Adobe Photoshop Beta. Here I have an image of a street crew dealing with some collapsed intersection pavers in a big city. So what we can do is we can go ahead and help out these construction workers with the lasso tool. I'll make a lasso selection around this construction site. Then I can click on Generative Fill and I can say Asphalt. Click Generate and we'll see what happens. So here Photoshop has made a big chunk of asphalt on top and here has made some asphalt that looks a little bit better. And probably this last one is the most realistic blending in. But what's nice is you can go ahead and regenerate to see if you want new variations. Sometimes they're better, sometimes they're worse. So this one here looks pretty good. It has a nice concrete patch. We've chopped up these people's legs, but that really integrates into the image pretty well there. Uh, the same with this one. This one has a strange concrete block on the end of the excavator, but it does a really good job of blending into the existing surroundings and having the color palette match. Go ahead and hide that layer. And we'll go ahead and make a new generative fill. So this time we can go ahead and replace this with something more interesting. So we'll lasso that out and we'll say a car falling into a collapsed intersection. So here we have all these cars that are generated with AI falling into this intersection. And once again, it's making these strange hallucinations that AI often does. This last one though, this is pretty good. This fits in really well with the surroundings. The lighting is nice. I can't say that this is really a car in the front, but you can see how this can be really useful and tweaked with a little bit more sensitive selections of what you actually want to use. Another great use of generative fill is expanding the background or outpainting. In order to do this, you have to change the canvas size. So I'll go to image, canvas size, and then what we can do is type times two, and then we say okay. So now if I zoom out, you can see that we have our image here and it has everything around the outside. And what we'll do is select this image and I wanna make sure I get some of the image. So I'll select the image like this and then I can go to select and I can just invert the selection. So now I'm selecting all these exterior pixels. And if I click generative fill, I'm going to make a generative fill but I don't have to type anything. I can just leave it blank. So I'll click generate, and now it's continued to fill in the city. So as you can see, it has created all these new things in this city. And now I can cycle through the options. I have to say the first and the third one are probably the best versions. It really did a good job in the last one of this building going straight up. And then I can go ahead on top of this and continue to add more things in there. So I can go ahead and select this bottom section here. So now what we can do is see if we can repair all of the street. So I can keep some of the image the same and then I'll just select this street. And as you can see now we don't have a hole in the street anymore. And so I can click over on this and it's patching the street. It even did a really good job extending that street all the way down. I think that looks really great. And then I can go forward again. I think I'm going to keep this one. As you can see I can keep stacking the generative fills on top. So right down here, I'm gonna kind of remove this strange area. And what I'll type in here is grass and street curb. Let's see what it does with that. So here it's made a new part of the image here that works pretty well. I'll probably keep that and then come back here. So you have to be selective of which parts you want to keep. I think this part of the image really needs to be improved. So let's go ahead and just select this section here. And I'll hold shift to expand the selection to get the rest of that. And then we're gonna type a modern contemporary apartment complex. And as you can see here, it's totally changed the situation here. So now I can cycle through these. Uh, I think the last one or the first one, probably that first one is the best one to use here. So now let's go ahead and see if we can change some other things about the image. Let's go ahead and select the sky right here. So with the lasso tool, I'll just be very quick and select the sky. And let's type thunderstorm. So it's made a cartoon thunderstorm in the back. I think the second one is probably the one to keep. So I'm gonna move this contextual dialogue out of the way. Let's see what other changes we can make to the image. Uh, 
This first part right here in the bottom doesn't look so exciting. So let's go ahead and go right through the middle here and type marching band. So we didn't get a marching band, but we have this strange ratchet strap. It probably influenced the band a lot. Now we have these strange mutant instruments. I think I'm gonna keep that ratchet strap. That's such a weird change of perspective there. And then right here, we'll go ahead and just see what Photoshop does. So, because you don't have to type a prompt, but I want something to exist in the middle of the image here that's interesting. So I'm just going to select everything right here and allow Photoshop to go wild with generative fill. So now it's recreated the entire street as an iced over scene. I think I'll go with that first one. I think that's, that's the most interesting here. And then once again, I can go to image, canvas size, and I can type times two to each of these dimensions. And then I'll zoom out a bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lasso in organically around the image here. And then I can go ahead and invert that selection. Now that it's inverted, I'll generate fill and I'll just leave it blank and see where Photoshop goes with this. So now Photoshop has taken our created image to an extreme. We have this big smoke plume in that one. The smoke plume is changed up to this rising torrent. I think I'll probably keep that one. Yeah, probably. Well, look at this crazy jumping over building. So then we have this image and we go ahead and go to image canvas size times two. And then one more time, we'll zoom out. Let's go ahead and lasso that again. And we're gonna give, and then invert the selection. And one last time, generate. And now we have our options generated from Photoshop's generative fill, and it's filled in this ginormous image. Now remember, we can really zoom in on this image and it gives us this strange distorted perspective. And there's so much detail. This is a very large image now. I think the first or the last one, once again, are the most interesting. So we have this one here, and I think I'll save the last one. So you can create all kinds of new fantasy scenes, and it's a really good tool for ideation and thinking about what can go out there. And this is without giving it a prompt. If you give it a prompt for the exterior, it can work even better. So hopefully you get a chance to use Photoshop's generative fill in some of your projects.